Thank you for listening to Liberty Christian Center's podcast. Let's join Pastor Paul Carlson for today's message. You know, God's Word will change your life. And really, our vision here at Liberty, you know, you want to, want to hear it? It's this, that, that people would get the Word in their lives in a measure, and they'd understand how to use that Word, how to, how to bring it out in their lives, and not just in church, but in everyday life. How to make you effective in the world that you live in. Because you are somebody. You are somebody. You know, I, I said this before, but the Steve, Pastor Stephen and the, the young adults, it, man, it's been a couple years at least, they, they did this thing where they were going around handing out, uh, there were $5 gift cards with inside a card that said, you matter. And uh, you know what our heart was, is just to let people know that they are somebody. They are somebody. People are always trying to take, but you know, we wanted to give them and tell them you matter. Well, you matter, and you make a difference. And our vision is to see you guys rise up in, in your own realm of influence and be the people God's called you to be, you know? To be able to be a success in life. You know, and success looks different, you know, to different people, you know? And, and you know, maybe you're in, in one line of work, but your, your success is going to look different than another person's. Don't compare yourself to everybody else, but be who God's called you to be. Praise the Lord. Um, so we're talking, we've been on this for a couple months, and I tell you what, I don't apologize at, it at all. We could talk on this for a year. You know, we could talk on this till Jesus comes. Will we? Well, hang around and find out. Um, we're talking about Holy Spirit. And you know, some key things I just, I've just got to repeat again in case you haven't been here is this, that Holy Spirit, what we, we, we've seen this, that, that he is a person. Isn't that amazing? He's a person. He's not just some influence out there. He's not just tongues. He's not just gifts. He's a person. And he lives here on the earth. He walks with us and he lives in us. Isn't that wild? And Jesus, you know, he was prepping the disciples before he took off. And, and he told them things that would just blow your mind. He said things like this. He said, said guys, it's going to be better when I go because, because he's going to be with you. The helper is going to come. Isn't that an amazing thing? That he's with you to help you and make life even better than it was when Jesus was here on the earth? That's most people's dreams, frankly, you know, and, and they, they dream about it like, wow, if I could have just walked the shores of Galilee with the master, you know, been with Jesus in the flesh. And I don't, you know, I tell you what, I've had that thought too, and I'm sure it would be grand, but Jesus himself said, what you and I have today is better. Can you say, say better? better? So he's with us. In John 14, uh, he, he said this. He said, I'll pray the Father and he'll give, I'll, he'll give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and he shall be in you. Say so he's, he's in me. What I want to challenge you is, is, you know, I don't know about you, but do you have things that come up in life that, that you know are going to happen, and, and sometimes the things that you don't feel capable of doing, sometimes you feel inadequate, and you, you, can, you can even take these things in your mind and mold them over, and, you th and there's almost this thing of dread about you, like, oh, you know, maybe it's, you know, like I say, maybe your high school class reunion. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to go and face everybody that I went to school with. Well, I'll tell you what, I've never gone. But, but I've gone with Dana twice to hers, and I've, I've experienced her going through it, you know. And Anyway, I just show up to kind of watch and observe. But, uh, you know, maybe there's something at work, you know, that you're just kind of like, how am I ever going to do this? Well, what I challenge you to do is when them thoughts come is see yourself full of the Holy Ghost. See yourself totally embodied with the, with the spirit of the living God. What kind of difference is that going to make? What difference is that going to make when you just walk into work tomorrow and go, you know, I, I don't recommend you go in there and s announce this to everybody, probably, but when you walk in knowing that Holy Spirit is living in you, what difference is that going to make? What difference is it? Well, you know, what, would it, what was it like to walk with Jesus? You're walking with the Holy Spirit. You're walking with Him. 
He's with you, and he's living in you. See yourself like that. Envision yourself as you go through life, facing life. You're not facing it alone. You're with him. Then it, Jesus said this too. In John 16, 12, he said, I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he'll guide you into all truth. For he'll not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he'll speak, and he'll tell you things to come. He'll glorify me, Jesus talking. He said, he'll glorify me. He'll take of what is mine, and he'll declare it unto you. Holy Spirit can do this like, like no one. He takes the things of Jesus and makes them real in your life. He takes theology and turns it into reality. He makes it livable. He takes the word from being just words on a page to being life in your heart. Okay? That's what he does. And it's so cool how he does that. You know, some people might teach with a chalkboard. He comes and unveils truth and says, bam, there it is. Go live it. That's how he rolls. Now, talking about walking, talking about living life with Holy Spirit, I've just got to throw this in. I don't know where it fits, so I'm just going to throw it in here, okay? Okay. Um, you know, you're sitting there envisioning yourself walking in the room and having Holy Spirit in you. Well, as you live that out, what I found is the best way for him to manifest in me is just to be me. Okay? Don't try to be, oh, I'm here and the Holy Spirit's in me. You know, if that isn't you, man, don't be that. Okay? Some people go on YouTube, you know, like Pastor Stephen. <laughs> and, you know, they go watch Catherine Kuhlman. Did you ever do that? Did you ever go watch Catherine Kuhlman? I mean, she was dramatic, you know? Did the Holy Spirit move through her? Absolutely. Just blew people away, you know? But she'd come out, you know, and she'd talk a certain way, and she was real flowy and all this kind of stuff. And, and don't try to be that. That's not the key. The key is to be you, but believe in the Holy Spirit living in you. You know, quite honestly, he works through me a lot of times, and I don't even realize he's doing it when I'm doing it, when he's doing it through me. You know what I'm saying? Does that, am I making sense to you? Am I talking to you today? Sometimes it's because you're not trying to be this, this superhuman, this super spiritual person. Be you, but believe in the God that lives in you. Be you, but believe in the supernatural life he's called you to. You know, the, the Holy Spirit moving through you. Wow, we've been invaded again by Japanese beetles. Anyway, that's a good sign because it has warmed up. I'm not going to step on them. Anyway, <laughs> in a good mode. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. If I was going to capsulize everything I'm going to say right now, I'd say this, is he's called you to be a minister. He's called you to minister the, the, the gospel of grace. He's called you to impart Jesus to people. He's called you to make a difference in the world that you live. He's called you to live supernaturally. Okay? Can you handle all that? I'm just telling you that you matter. I'm telling you that you make a difference. That you can affect people because of who you are, that I can't affect. Okay? Let God work through you. Be aware of Holy Spirit living in you. Uh, in 1 Peter chapter 4, in verse 11, I'm just going to read you the, the, well, I'll read the whole thing. He said this, If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability that God supplies. Isn't that something? He says, if anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability that God supplies. So we don't want to go out spinning our wheels in life. And you know how you spin your wheels? You look at you. 
When you're walking through life and when you're ministering and your eyes are, are totally on you, that's spinning your wheels. But when you're walking through life and you're ministering, keeping your eyes on Holy Spirit, that's ministering with the power and the ability that God gives. So in, in our, our, our series here, where we're at is we've been talking about manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And in largely, you'll find these listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And, and there's nine gifts that he talks about or manifestations. And we've spent some time talking about the revelation gifts, which is the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits. And we're moving on to talk about the power gifts, you know, which is the, the gift of faith, the working of miracles, and... Uh, Help me, the gift of, gifts of healing. And, and um, what I would say is this, that, that as, as you, you see these gifts operate in people's lives, you know, usually the three of them kind of work together. You know, they, they kind of operate, you know, in one, and, 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 you know, you don't need to mentally separate them all, but know this, there's power working in your life. There's faith that Holy Spirit will manifest working in your life. There's working of miracles, you know, that he wants to work through you in your life. There's, 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 there's gifts of healing that he'll operate through you. But here's the deal. With all of it is it takes you being open and it takes you stepping out, okay? You got to step out. You got to do something. You got to step out. You got to say something. Smith Wigglesworth is somebody that, that I think I've read most of the books that have been written about him. He was an English plumber, and um, those, were, those were his qualifications to begin with. But uh, he was quite, you know, he was a sinner, and he just, he was kind of a tyrant. And his wife, his, her name was Polly, P-O-L-L-Y, and uh, she was a sweet Christian lady, and, and he just did, did crazy things to her. He'd lock her out of the house sometimes and just do stuff. But then all of a sudden, Smith got born again. He got born again, and he just got transformed. And he, he was like a house of fire going. He preached to, the, you know, most of the world. He preached and, and, and saw great miracles through his life. In, you know, different books I've read, I've seen like 14 people raised from the dead through Smith's ministry. And he never wrote a book himself because he was an advocate that, you know, I read the Bible, I don't read other books. And, and that's great, but I'm so thankful that there were people around him and the people that knew him, and, and even his son-in-law wrote one of the books, but uh, they wrote books about him. And he was quoted as saying this in, in I think it was Ever Increasing Faith. He said, uh, if you'll take a step of ordinary faith, what do you mean ordinary faith? Well, the gift of faith is supernatural faith to receive a miracle. It's not just saving faith, but it's, a, it's man, it's Holy Ghost moving through you. And so, you know, people get all weird and they think, oh, I don't know if I could ever have the gifts of the Spirit work through me. Yeah, you can. He is living in you. He is walking with you. He's there to equip you to be a minister of the, of the gospel. And, and Smith said this, if you'll take a step of ordinary faith, when you come to the end of that faith, very often this supernatural gift of faith will take over. Isn't that something? So his experience was, you know, in ministry, he says, if you'll just step out and do what you know and believe God, he says many times, he says, it'll just come through for you. Now, I don't have a magic switch where I can just switch off and on a miracle, but what I'm telling you today is this, use all the faith you have. Step out. One way, one way that you can step out with people, it's a powerful thing, is just your hands. Laying hands on sick people is a Bible way to transmit healing power into people's lives. You know, in Hebrews, it talks about laying on of hands. It calls it a doctrine of the church. Is it a doctrine of the church? Yeah, it's a doctrine of the church. Right in there with baptisms. You know, we think nothing of having a sign up and having, hey, you've been water baptized? We do that every summer and then through the years, sometimes we go to the hotel or somewhere and, and baptize people. People don't think anything of it. They all accept that. But in Hebrews, uh, it, it talks about doctrines of the church and right along with baptisms, it says laying on of hands. 
Isn't that something? Everybody take your hands and, and hold them up in front of your eyes and say this with me. Say, these hands are to be laid on sick people and see the power of God move through them to heal and deliver. Wow. Did you ever do that before? <laughs> I know if you're visiting and you think, man, that is the weirdest pastor I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I know. I'm just telling you today, you're a minister. You have a calling on your life. You have a purpose for your life. You matter. You are an influencer. And one thing you can do is you can lay hands on people and you can believe God for his power to work through you and deliver people from sickness. Now, what if I do it and it doesn't work? Well, you're no better off, you're no worse off. Do it again. Do it again. People, don't let the fear of failure keep you from trying, okay? Move forward. Believe, not in yourself, believe in God, believe in his word. Jesus said this. He said, these signs would follow them that believe. They'd lay hands on the sick, and they would recover. They would recover. They would recover. He said this, he said the disciples, it says they went out preaching the word and the Lord was working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Most people that you see that are, are sick, if you went up to them and say, could I put my hand on you and pray? Most people would let you do it. Most people would, you know? So what does it hurt? Go out there and pray for people. Most times when I've laid hands on people to be healed, I'm, I'm going to tell you this, I haven't seen instant results. Sometimes I have. Sometimes I haven't. I remember there was a lady in, in the last church that we were pastors in, in Hopkins, Minnesota. And after the service one, one morning, she came running up to the front. Everybody's leaving to go, you know, flood out and get, get lunch. And she came running up, and, and I'm standing around the front row, which I usually did, you know, wondering where, what, you know, whatever. And she comes up and says, will you pray for me? She says, I was in a car accident this week, and I've already been to the doctor, been x-rayed and everything. And, you know, I don't remember the specifics, but she was all out of whack. And, and I said, well, sure I will. So I laid hands on her, and I just prayed. And you want to know how spiritual I felt? I didn't feel spiritual at all. In fact, I wondered, well, what good did, in my mind, the thought was there, what good did that do? You never have thoughts like that, right? <laughs> I went away the next time we had service. It was either Wednesday or Sunday. She came running in. She says, Pastor, I've been back to the doctor. I'm totally healed. Everything has is, everything is changed. But take the step. Take the step and pray. All right, talking about faith, talking about miracles, talking about you know, healings. You know, um, going through the Bible, I saw a bunch of examples of these things working. You know, you, these are stories that you're all familiar with. But one time Jesus was in a boat in Mark chapter 4. He's out in, in, in the sea and, and the, the storm brews, you know. And, of course, I love this part that he's, he's downstairs in the boat sleeping on a pillow. Isn't that, does it ever seem like that's where he's at in life when problems come up? Where's Jesus? Is he down there sleeping on a pillow again? What? Uh, hopefully it's an agronomically correct one. But anyway, he gets up and, 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 and he stands out and, and he speaks and he, he says, peace be still. And the storm absolutely calms down. All right, that is a working of miracles. That is a working of miracles. Why is it? Well, it wasn't like, well, we're going to have a picnic tomorrow. We're going to pray for a good sunny day and everything was good. No, this is the middle of a storm. He prays and bam, everything changed. Okay? A guy named John Alexander Dowie. I don't know if you ever read his book. Um, he, he, had a, he was a powerful minister. He got a little wacky in his last years. And, uh, you know, one, one guy, Brother Hagin, used to say this. You can never judge a man's ministry until he's gone to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you what, he had, John Alexander Dowie had a powerful impact on the earth. And many ministers that you and I have heard of, read after, and followed came, came out of John Lake's ministry. F.F. Uh, F. Bosworth is one. 
But uh, Dowie, uh, one of the things that he was known for is this, is he, he was brought to court in Chicago because he had so many people healed by laying hands on him that they brought him to court and they charged him for practicing medicine without a license. He had wild things happen. Uh, the thing I was going to bring out, though, is that, that back then, you know, they didn't have airplanes, and he would, he would come cross the ocean when he'd go to Europe and come back. He'd, he, he, he'd cross the ocean on a ship, and, and more than once, he was out in the middle of the ocean, and a storm would arise, and Dowie just stood out there and spoke to that storm and, and told it to be still, and it, it, it stopped. Peace was there. Stillness was there. You know what? These gifts will operate through ordinary human beings like you and me that are filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you these things because if we don't ever talk about them here, we are, we're never going to see them. Okay? We've got to talk about these things. We've got to stir ourselves up. We've got to believe in the power that's on the inside of us if we're ever going to see them. Another uh, way that you can see miracles and healings be activated, that you can step out, is anointing people with oil. Now, that may not go over quite as well at the shopping mall if you go up to someone and say, hey, I see you're sick, you know, could I anoint you with oil? They may think you're a little weirder than just laying your hands on them. But James chapter 5 is really clear. It says, you know, frankly, you don't have to go much further than the church. You'll find people in need, okay? And you just tell them, you know, it says in James chapter 5, it says if any of you are sick, it says let them call for the elders of the church. Well, I don't know if I'm an elder. Well, just step out anyway. I'll give you other Bible examples. But, but it says anoint them with oil and the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise them up. Jesus sent the disciples out with oil. Um, somewhere I've got the scripture. But he sent them out the same thing as in James 5. It's, it's just like he went out, they went out to minister to people. that would anoint them with oil. And, and the prayer of faith would save the sick. Like Wigglesworth said, that's kind of what I'm seeing today. Is as you step out and do what you know. Expect God to come through and do the rest. One time... Um, I remember uh, I, w I was in a minister's meeting. This was, this was goodness, how old are you, Kara? You're 12. Anyway, it was probably 25 years ago. And Dan and I were in this minister's meeting, and this guy who I would say is a prophet, he was praying for, for different ones here, and, and he, he was praying really nicely for most people. And then he comes up to me, and he looked at me, and then he punched me right in the stomach, you know? And, and people watching that might have thought, wow. You know, if other people in the prayer line might have gone and sat down. <laughs> but I can tell you from my end of it, you know, the receiving end here, you know, I, it wasn't like it knocked the wind out of me. It wasn't like anything. And, and it, it was like God hit me. And, and I was on the floor the next thing I knew. And, and, and uh, this is my words if you allow me to, I'll just say this, that probably for the next five hours, I was drunk in the spirit, you know? What do you mean? I was more aware of God than I was me. And, and, and uh, when I was just out there, I remember this minister pointed at me, and, and he says, you're going to see the gift of faith operate through you. I thought, really? Well, I didn't walk away from that and try to work up the gift of faith or anything. And frankly, when Dane and I did finally go home, at that time, we were caretakers in an apartment complex, and we had to go clean an apartment. I tell you, that's a transition. You go from this glory place to go over there and cleaning a t dirty old apartment out. I mean, anyway, it brings you to the flesh quick. But I remember in this particular time, we had one child, and, and it was Kara, and, and uh, she was dealing with something called croup. Ha ha parents, have any of your kids ever had the croup? I mean, it is one of the most miserable things as a parent for your kid to have the croup. Because, you know, this had gone on for, I would guess, three days. And we'd been to the doctor, and we were doing everything we knew to do. I, in fact, I had all the, the things down. They told me is that, that I know one night she was, she was sparking it up, you know, and crouping. And, and I grabbed her. I just grabbed her and ran into the bathroom and turned on all the hot waters and shut the door. And I just held her there because the, the steam was to help break it up is what I understood. 
And, you know, as a parent, and do you ever notice this as a parent when your kids are dealing with something like that? It's like magnified at night, right when I'm trying to sleep. <gasps> you know, it sounds like Sparky the Seal in the next room. <gasps> And it's just, it just, it just, it drains you as a parent because you love that kid and, and you don't want him suffering. And I, I remember, you know, this was going on in the same time frame. So this, this night, you know, we'd been, we'd been through it for days, you know, and Dana and I are just laying in bed hoping for the best. And all of a sudden, as you're laying in the silence, I hear it. Hoop, hoop. Then it's my imitation. That's the best I can do right now. But it's this croup coming out of my kid. And so we just laid there and we're thinking, you know, and I, know, I don't know what was in Dana's mind, but my mind was, oh, man, here we go again. And then just something rose up in me and I said, no way. And I just spoke out loud. How loud? Well, I don't think the neighbors heard me, but I tell you what, Dana heard me. The devil heard me, you know, and God heard me. And I just said, in Jesus' name, I command croup to go from my girl right now. And, and you know what happened? It was an absolute silence. There was no more croup. In fact, it got so quiet that Dana got scared and had to go over to the crib to see if, if she was breathing. I mean, that's faith. <laughs> so, so after, you know, checking everything out, she says, it's okay. But you know what that was? That was a gift of faith. It was a gift of faith. It was stepping out in what I knew and saying, help me, Holy Ghost. Take it, take it on, take it on. God wants to minister through each one of us. Thank you for listening to Liberty Christian Center's podcast. To partner with this ministry or for any additional information, please visit libertychristiancenter.org.